Right guys and girls, Mark Crossfield here. Today I'm gonna do cheap v expensive golf balls. I bought these Slazengers off whichever website you wanna buy your Slazengers off. There's a dozen of them, I think they were 19 pounds. Let's show you what it does compared to a premium ball. This is the Strixon Z style, the ball I gain. Now I'm sponsored by Strixon, they don't know I'm making this video and they have no say in the outcome. What I'm gonna do is hit shots and show you the difference between these two balls because there's pros to this ball as well as cons and pros and cons to this ball as well. We might find out that one is circled better than another but defining what better is is up to you as much as it's up to me i can just give you my information on what i think would help you or not so cheap balls or shall we say expensive balls in the comments down below how much do you spend on your golf balls let me know down in those comments So we're going to do the normal four disciplines, 15 yard chip, 100 yard shot, and then a 150 yard shot, then a drive. So in theory, the distance ball, you're going to be looking at more distance, you would hope. But let's see what you sacrifice to get more distance and if it comes out. Round one though, let's talk packaging. I mean, the Slazengers use a smaller box and in the box, the balls are just loose, look. They're just in there. Where the Srixen and obviously most premium brand balls, we've got a box within a box, a lidded box. I mean, the amount of cardboard being used for this compared to the Slazenger, you could argue, and this goes for all ball manufacturers, is a little bit gross. Bearing in mind, golf is a game that uses a lot of land for maybe not many people. Is it not time that the manufacturers of golf balls stop competing just on the beautiful of their, or the loveliness of their packaging and start thinking about you know, the planet that we all want to still play golf on. So round one, packaging wise, even though this will feel cheap, and that's the problem, we're, we're to blame as much as anybody else. It's got to win, has it not? Saying that, I don't know which one is recyclable either. So they might win back by one being recyclable or not. But let's package it on golf balls. Come on, golf companies, let's get on it. So I'm going to start with the Slazenger 15 yard chip shot. I'm using my 58 degree. Oh, hello. <laughs> That popped up very high. Oh yeah, and again, that is hitting like way up the screen. That is amazing. Oh, wow. Like that felt like a bottomy strike, so it should go in low and it's just popped up in the air. I mean, good results. That was literally just popping up the face. Um, I would guess the spin on that is gonna be crazy low around the green. Let's see how it feels compared to the Strixen. So you can see there just from the streams, look how much lower that's going in. And as you would imagine, the sound is different. The Strixon feels softer. Again, that went in lower. It feels like it's got more spin. The Slazenger had that kind of click to it, but not to say there isn't Strixon balls that don't have that click as well. You can go to the other premium ball. So is it the XV? It's the one most of the tour players use, and it doesn't feel as soft as this. It feels more like the Slazenger. I think the sound, certainly when it comes to these kind of premium brands, they can make it sound like whatever you want it to sound like. So the biggest difference with those three shots, and I'm gonna keep going around and get a big data set, is it was totally noticeable how high the Slazenger popped. Like that was almost funny to watch it go off. And from my bigger data set here, you can see the ball speed is pretty matched because I'm trying to match the carry distance, which I did, and the total yard. So I got from A to B, I got there, but look at the spin difference, three seven to one six. <laughs> 1,600 rares with the Slazenger. That's what's popping up in the air. If you think about the dynamics of a wedge shot, so you've got an impact and there's gonna be an element of the ball slipping on the face because obviously it's not rebounding like it would off a straight face. And the way that ball cover reacts with the face will make it grab, which then makes it go in a little bit lower. If it doesn't grab, it's just gonna pop up in the air, which is what we saw. And look at the launch angle. I don't think I've ever launched a standard chip 43 degrees. 32's in my window, and I can make that go higher or lower by manipulating the loft. It's, it's kind of correct. This is way too high. We're gonna move up to the 100 yards. I'm gonna use my 52 degree. Round one, or round two, because the packaging definitely went to Slazenger in my opinion. Um, yet yeah, no brainer on the chip shots. The Slazenger, like, it's a noticeable performance difference. Like, you're saving money, so you're gonna win on money on this one, but 
you'll lose in performance in that area just and it's huge like it's massive how different is the performance as we go up through the different elements of loft though so we're going to start with my Strixon 100 yards 52 is just a nice one for me I don't really have to think much it's like the a, a decent strike it's like in the number it's going off out as I'd imagine it feels medium to soft feels reliable like again that flight relates to what I felt with the strike and if you watch any of our videos when you get in different lies you'll hear us say oh that one came in low and spun or that one popped up in the air there's always that element of non-control from the elements of outdoor hitting and that's what makes golf so brilliant this is a dry indoor test um, where I'm trying to control everything as much as possible but you're always going to get the variability of outside which is what makes golf so great the fact that an indoor test a dry test I get little variability so less variability you're always going to get an element that makes me more, feel more confident than to apply the conditions to that baseline if that makes sense and this is where maybe a good bit of equipment in the ball can give you some consistency because what happens is we're only going to take the consistency away from our abilities and from the variations of lies that we get in so let's give this slazenger a go 100 yards oh my word i mean look at the stream look how much higher that's going i mean i've hit a shot it's there a little bit more run out as well now i am scared i'm gonna hit the roof with that oh wowzers like that is ridiculously high, but not stopping. It doesn't seem to want to stop. So obviously in a distance ball, this makes a clippier sound. And that's such a common thread with golf balls. Softer golf balls feel like they're going to stop more. Firmer golf balls, so the clickier sound feel like they're going to be powerful. Um, and I'm not saying this ball won't be powerful, but at the moment with lofted clubs, it feels more like it's just going to shoot to orbit. Oh yeah, like those streams, you can just see it. Look at the animation, like it's, they are hitting barely the top of that net. Wowzers, look at the, <laughs> look at the difference. 8,400 revs with the Z Star, two six with the Slazenger. Two foul, that's a driver spin with a wedge. Like that is, outstandingly different and then again we see it in the launch and how many of you in the comments down below when it comes to your wedges most common problem that we see with amateur golfers you see it with rory on our videos is pros are very good at launching wedges through like one window each time so very consistent with their launch angles amateurs or lesser skilled golfers they'll have one that launches through the window then they obviously fin one which is in, but they'll hit one okay and it just pops up in the air because they deliver the wrong loft comes up short right i mean that ball is born to just pop up in the air and that's one thing in the wedges that if you could get away from for amateurs like if you could get them not having those random launch angles you would improve their wedge games and then look at the dispersion long to short distance ball yeah look at it scraping out way further but then also well, it's just a big deviation from front to back, isn't it? Where this one is more what you'd expect in the wedges. It's more of a circular, consistent um, landing angle. Obviously, I'd want the variation quicker, uh, tighter than that. Also, look at the streams here. Like, you don't see this very often from the same shot. You know, look, one go 105. I mean, this one's running out a, a guest one yard it's obviously predicted the rollout this one's rolling out loads of yards it's going in higher but it's rolling out for me this is low hanging fruit no brainer like if you care about performance in the lower loft or the higher lofted clubs the lower clubs you would just never game that ball you would use something more premium than that but let's move up through the lofts so 150 yards now i'm using a nine iron slazenger to kick us off Again, it doesn't feel ridiculous. Like it starts feeling like an ordinary ball now. And again, that's see, this is what I'm worried with this ball. Now do we see the distance element coming in where I'm now gonna have to adjust what I'm doing. It doesn't feel like it's as high, as, look how long that's gone. But feels fine, that's a better shot. Look, and I've controlled that. So I felt like I've almost eased off. It's still gone the long side. Look at it roll out. Um, it feels fine. Like when you start hitting 
150 yard shots, it feels like many golf balls. It doesn't feel as funny like it did with the wedges. Same shot with the Srixen. It's a fraction less clippy, but it's closer. So this is really interesting now. You see the ball speeds matching as I try and find the distance. You can see the launch angle now falling more in place. You can see the distance is there in the Slazenger ball. The distance is really showing through. You got eight yards of rollout compared to predicted five. And we see the big spin changes here, six, two to four, one. And the other noticeable difference is the standard deviation in the spin. Now I would hit more to confirm this, but my initial thoughts would be 900 rev standard deviation from that low spin is scaring me. 300 revs with that kind of club is much more in my tolerance. So the expensive ball is tighter in what comes out. So if I perform, it performs. Where with the Slazenger, even when I feel like I'm performing, you've got that bigger variable. And you see that in the green to the red lines here. I can't hit a 150 shot with that variability on an indoor test, because you go and take that outside, it's just gonna increase. The same way the red circle would increase, but I want it to increase from the smaller amount. Again, you work your variability into there, you're gonna have bigger circles subject to your skill level, and then you take it outside, it's gonna get bigger even more. And this is one of the points I think that's quite interesting. You need to decide what's better for you because obviously one set of balls is way cheaper than another, and that might be your buying premise, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, none of these balls would stop me playing golf. If I had to play with one of the, like, I had to play with the Slazenger, I'd play with it. I would just learn to adapt to it. It wouldn't be the style of play I'm used to, but I would adapt uh, and get it, get round. Would I be a better or worse player? Well, if I'm playing against people who've got the advantage of the other ball, I think I would be fighting an uphill battle, but it wouldn't stop me fighting it. The other thing to think about as well, which I think is really interesting when it comes to this, is that lots of people watch these videos and would say things like, well, my variability is so massive, I'm not going to see it. Well, I would argue you might actually see it more, because if those circles are bigger, and then you go and make them bigger by using a less predictable ball. And like I say, you take it outside to wet days, windy days, slopey lies, down in lies, long grass, short grass, all the many variables that we get in a impact of a bit of the mother nature getting between the ball and the face. Again, the variables just get bigger. You're increasing a big variable to an even bigger one. And the whole idea when people come for lessons is we're trying to tighten everything up. All I see at the moment is this ball is just loosening everything up. Apart from your pocket, it's tightening your pocket, isn't it? Keeping your wallet tight. Let's go with the big stick then. This is where I think these ideas of distance should be playing through. It's a distance ball. You want extra distance? Is this the answer? And I would, that's a good drive, look. It feels good. Like that feels good off the face. It's a slightly louder sound, but not louder than many other balls I've played. Again, a decent drive, you can see it falling out of the air, but I have hit that highish toe. I mean, there's some good drives, and we're gonna hit more. I like to get up to at least 15 shots with each one of these tests. That is out there. Like, that is a distance ball. Is this the answer to my longer distance? That was out there. All right, let's compare that to my Z-Star. And when you get up to this point, I've said it in lots of the ball reviews, it's the club that starts shining through for the sound and feel more. Not much difference in these two for feel. Can't imagine many people are buying balls for the feel off the driver, particularly. Right, that's the batch of shots. Let's see where this distance really is. All right, this is really interesting. So the Z-Star's got more ball speed on average. It's amazing. 1.6, 162, which is quite quick for me to 157 with the Slazenger. So that's the other way round to the way most people would think it goes, but that doesn't surprise me. And then two things with the spin. So 2.5 spin with the Z Star, which is about where I am. I want to be around 2.2, but I've got 400 revs um, standard deviation on that. So some higher, some a bit lower. Launching at 13 degrees, we round up compared to again a higher launch, always higher launching with the Slazenger. But look at the standard deviation, nearly was well, six and a half rev, 600, 665 rev standard deviation on a 1.8. This ball can spin down at like 1.2. 
1,200 reps, like that is falling out of the air. Loads of amateurs that I teach, their ball just falls out of the air with a driver, like it just dips. Trying to get better flights for them is a key to helping them hit better drives consistently more longer. This ball, with its again bigger variable, slightly higher launch, but dipping out the air shot that's in there from ridiculously low spin. You, you could argue that would be damaging. Like you would see that. Like I reckon I'd be able to stand on a tee and watch students of different handicaps hit that ball and think, cool, that one's really dipping out of the air. And then if you look at the distances are really interesting. So 276 to 279, more carry out the Z style, which you'd imagine from the but like more sustainable spin. But then the predicted roll is a little less. So the distance ball is a little bit longer, you could argue. But yet again, the short to long is a little worrying on the green. When you start getting to longer shots, the circle that we saw in the wedge turns into this oval because you're hitting them all into a distance you're now trying to control left and right. Really common pattern you see if you look at Tor Pro data, they're very circular when they're coming into the greens with say like, you know, 120 yard shots out so this way left and right gets tight but short and long gets equal to left and right creating a circle but when you get the kind of 150 and above you actually start seeing left and right increasing but short and long getting tighter it's quality of strike and then obviously that's quality of equipment as well plays into that a little bit too so hard to choose on these two in the averages much easier for me to choose in the fact that it launches a bit high and the standard deviation on the spin is scary Let's define better. For me, this is better all day long. Premium ball, it could be this brand, it could be other brands, you're gonna see the same patterns. The consistency I would pay extra for and did do when I was younger and playing golf. I would never game that kind of ball. Now, if you're losing five balls around, you really wanna lose that many balls. No, play them. Again, my point with both of these, this wouldn't stop me playing golf, it would just make me change how I play golf. I would still play with this. This wins on packaging. This wins on price. You've got to work out what you want from your golf ball. If you're looking at performance differences and improvements, it's an absolute no-brainer. Like it's not a complicated decision. It's an easy one. You would go that one. But if you lose a load, you might go here. But remember, there's lots of stops between here and here where you could find that like happy medium for, for 20 pounds maybe another video we could do in the comments down below let me know um there are other balls of around 25 pounds 20 pounds that we could compare to this one which probably are closer to this and not as irresponsible if you like as this one let me know what you think cheap really expensive i think expensive wins let me know what you think would win for your game in those comments section down below there we go, that was fun. Sorry, little side note I forgot to say, is in the test, I'm hitting quite a few balls, I don't know if you can see that, the, the Slazenger definitely started marking up as well. So if you don't lose balls, if you do use balls for a certain amount of holes, it did feel like this one was gonna decay quicker, where the Strixon just carried on being like it was out of the box. Now I've seen great tests on durability of balls, and I think it's around 40 drivers with even a premium ball before you start losing some ball speed. So all balls Balls will decay over an amount of shots. 40 drivers, so you're probably, like if you're keeping one ball for two rounds, you're pushing it to its limit. But I reckon, well, let me know what you think. I think I, I would, if I was had the game with Slazenger, I would be changing them definitely every nine, maybe every three holes, subject to how I strike it, those kind of things. You get one clean out of a bunker or it's a tree, I just feel like this one's really gonna mark up and that will start affecting its flight. Thanks for watching.